Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to CountryCast. Today we are going to have a little fun. We're going to take a look back at one of country music's hottest feuds. A feud that happened at a very critical time for country music, as well as a feud between two stars that without question changed the game for the genre and is still impacting the country movement as we know it today. Now, our topic for today surrounds the beef between Class of 89 star Mr. Travis Tritt and the ever-so-talented yet controversial Mr. Billy Ray Cyrus. And just to be clear, this feud was not in the back of fans' minds or even the industries because these two made their opinions and thoughts very clear publicly against one another. Just real quick before we get into today's story, I would like to take a moment to say thank you to all of our subscribers and supporters out there. Y'all's support does not go unnoticed and it is greatly appreciated. And for the many of you who we see returning and are not yet subscribed, I would like to ask if you could please take a moment and hit that subscribe button. It helps us out tremendously and it lets YouTube know that you love us here at CountryCast. And again, thank you to everyone. So let's get back to talking about some good old country music. Billy Ray Cyrus versus Travis Tritt. Two powerhouses in country music and well beyond, and acts who brought their spin on country music at two different ends of the spectrum. It's important to note Tritt and Cyrus's break into country before getting to their falling out in 1992. We'll start with Travis Tritt. As I mentioned earlier, he is part of the famous class of 89 in country music. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with that label, it obviously was in the year of 1989 when Travis Tritt broke through the scene with fellow acts like Garth Brooks, Clint Black, Vince Gill, and Alan Jackson. So there you have it, 1989 is considered to be a very special year in country music as these artists have all defined country in their own unique way and have all stamped their name into the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. The class of 1989 was huge, and speaking of defining country music in their own way, Travis Tritt had his way by producing traditional country and even bluegrass, but with his signature sound of southern rock and roll in all of the mix. Now, we already had folks like Charlie Daniels, Hank Jr., Jerry Reed, Alabama, and so on, but Travis Tritt did bring a new element to that sound, curating an even broader audience outside of country music. And plus, that in itself is why the class of 89 is heavily recognized as the artist within that class helped country music reach the masses in numbers that country had not really seen before. We can sit and discuss all of Travis's accolades, awards, his hit songs, and his albums, but that's a whole nother story in itself, so we are going to switch gears here and now touch on Billy Ray's beginnings. Now that you have a little background as to what made Tritt stand out and have initial breakthrough success, here is a little about Billy Ray Cyrus's start. But... His breakthrough is where the controversy builds and ultimately finds the feud between Billy Ray and Travis Tritt. Billy Ray made his debut three years after Travis and the boys made theirs in 1992. And unlike Travis Tritt, Billy Ray Cyrus was really in his own lane at the time. Country music was filled with talent by this time, however. Guys like Brooks and Dunn and Tracy Lawrence were now in the mix, but Billy Ray Cyrus, one could argue, was on his own island. In the year of 1992, Billy Ray Cyrus was introduced to country, uh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, to the world, after his release of his debut album, Some Gave All. And y'all already know where I'm headed with this, I'm sure, but yeah, you guessed it. His signature song, Achy Breaky Heart, was released as the debut single from the record, and whether folks want to admit it or not, it became a sensation not only in country music, but throughout all genres of music. Achy Breaky Heart was a top five hit in 1992 for all genre, landed number one on the Hot Country Songs chart, and it was also the first country single to be certified as platinum since Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers hit Islands in the Stream back in 1983. 
Not to mention the success that Achy Breaky Heart had overseas. That success was also astronomical. And of course, when the video dropped, line dancing really became all the craze. But again, this is where Travis Tritt interjected himself and publicly shared his thoughts on Billy Ray's debut song, which was not really flattering. When asked about Billy Ray's song in an interview with the Associated Press back in 1992, Tritt said, I haven't seen his show, so I can't say anything about that. I haven't seen the man personally, so I can't say anything about him personally. I haven't listened to his albums, so I can't make a statement about that. But I have seen the video, and I have heard Achy Breaky Heart, and I don't care for either one of them. It just seems kind of frivolous. The video doesn't appeal to me because it shows him stepping out of a limousine in front of thousands and thousands of fans, and nobody's even heard of this guy. Garth Brooks didn't even do that. It doesn't seem very realistic to me. He closes and adds that the video for Achy Breaky Heart was transforming country into an ass-wiggling contest. Now, some months passed before we really heard anything from Billy Ray about Travis's remarks, but at the American Music Awards in 1993, Billy Ray Cyrus didn't hold back and appeared to throw some shade back at Travis Tritt. Here is what Billy had to say during his acceptance speech after winning Best Country Song of the Year for Achy Breaky Heart. Take a look. To those people who don't like Achy Breaky Heart, here's a quarter, cause someone who cares. Yikes. There you have it. Obviously, he is referencing Travis Tritt's mega hit, Here's a Quarter, Call Someone Who Cares. Now, since the feud, Tritt apologized for his comments, explained that what he said was blown out of proportion, and even sent Billy Ray a peace lily. And the two have even performed together throughout their careers since the feud. It seems to have been, obviously, reconciled. But during a time where country music was exploding in music, this feud clearly carried some weight. And in closing... Hearing the start of both Billy Ray and Travis Tritt's careers, they both were reaching outside of country with their audiences. Now, Billy Ray takes more heat for how he did it, but both of them played a huge role in country music's modern success. And some may agree, and there will be some who do not, but Billy Ray had some really great songs as well outside of Achy Breaky Heart. In my opinion, his sophomore album, It Won't Be The Last, is damn good as well as his third album, Storm in the Heartland. That's a really good record. And sometimes I just think that his work is a little overshadowed by the commercial success and even the negativity towards Achy Breaky Heart. Crossing country with other genres has only made country that much more valuable and influential as well, and as making it as big as it has ever been right now. Both Billy Ray and Travis Tritt are a big part of that. I mean, guys, the mullet is back, the mullet is around, and I think Billy Ray had the best one, and the look, and everything, and look at where we're at right now in country. Billy Ray did put his stamp on this business. So guys, let us know y'all's thoughts and feelings towards the feud, as well as what you think about genres being crossed within country music. Billy Ray was not the only one to do it early on. Randy Travis, Dolly Parton, Kenny Rogers, Conway Twitty, and many others made this happen as well. But in 1992, this didn't matter. Travis Tritt, he was not very fond of Achy Breaky Heart. Guys, thank you for tuning in to Country Cast. That'll be it for today's video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Turn those notifications on as well so you never miss out on any breaking updates surrounding your favorite country artist and all the news coming right out of Music City. Y'all stay country.